Hi, my name is Melinda Hamilton and I'm a graduate student at the University of Texas El Paso. I currently am getting my master's in leadership studies and I work as an athletic trainer. Currently, I work with the UTEP women's volleyball team and I absolutely love it. Um, I am taking a leadership class right now uh, in leadership communications, um, which required me to make a video. So this is what that um, video is now. And it is going to be based off of one of Stephen Denning's theories in his book, Secret Language of Leadership. Uh, before I begin this presentation, I just wanted to go in and give a background on why I decided um, to choose the theory of leadership presence and the body language of leadership. The reason I decided to choose this was just based off of my experience in the realm of athletic training as well as being in the athletic world for many years now. Um, I have been both the athlete, I have been um, the athletic trainer now and have held many leadership um, roles within those aspects of being a captain and seeing how much um, you can have effective leadership and have seen poor <laughs> leadership as well. So I think that body language is a huge part of that and that's why I decided to kind of discuss this when I was reading through the book. There's many great other things that um, Denning kind of discusses through there on how to be effective leadership and to have great communication with your followers or with your audience. However, I think that this is something that's important and not only important in my profession in sports medicine, but also important in many other organizations and businesses uh, to have effective leaders. So that is why I decided to go ahead and give this presentation and I hope you enjoy it. So let's begin. Uh, just as a kind of a general uh, overview of what I'm gonna be talking about. First, I'm gonna talk about um, Stephen Denning's theory about leadership presence and the body language of leadership and kind of discuss in context of his theory of what he meant by that and kind of my own personal take on the matter and then talk about how to actually um, put that theory into practice and the basics of it and how I've seen um, based on my previous experiences as well as watching other leaders of how body language does affect leadership and being able to communicate effective messages um, to your followers. Uh, and then finally I'm just going to kind of conclude and wrap up on why I think this theory um, is so valuable and important on having effective leadership and being able to inspire and create that desire in your followers to follow along with your mission and buy in to whatever you're trying to accomplish as a leader. Uh, for myself, sometimes it can be um, just as much as just getting an athlete to buy in of why I think they should do a certain exercise or rehab so that they can get better and get back out there playing. But it can go as far um, as a CEO getting uh, everyone on board on to create a change in their business um, and things like that. So uh, first, uh, let's go ahead and get started and talk about uh, Denning's idea uh, of this theory of leadership presence and body language of leadership. So let's go ahead and begin with this video presentation. Um, first, Denning discusses in this book about how elements that contribute to presence in leadership are one, having commitment um, to a clear and inspiring goal. Um, second, to be aware of your story, um, as well as being aware of the story of your listeners or your audience. And third, which is what I'm going to be uh, going further into in this video, is the physical things that we do with our bodies to communicate to our followers. This part can be very, very important um, in leadership, and specifically body language is the physical thing that you do with your body, as Denning mentioned um, in presence, that if we are able to project energy so that it energizes others to thinking that our feelings as well as verbal messages and our bodily movements are all in sync, um, that we can hugely reinforce what we're trying to get across to listeners, and that if our body contradicts what we're trying to say, it will either distract or undermine our intended messages, which can be very negative. So as you can see from just these two points of how important body language is actually um, to having effective leadership. Next point is being that he discusses that this leadership is just as important um, as the verbal, verbal aspect of leadership. So without this leadership presence, um, it's hard to kind of gain that respect um, or get others to listen to you. And sometimes, you might not be taking seriously just based off of your body language. Yes, uh, what you say comes out of your mouth does have a huge impact on that as well, but how you say it um, sometimes can be even more important. So specifically, yes, what you do with your body, but also how your tone of voice and how you move your head or 
whatever it may be, um, has a great impact on it too. He goes in further in his book to describe Bella Linda Harplin and Kathy Luber's um, defined presence as the ability to connect authentically with the thoughts and feelings of others. Um, if you are being really aggressive um, in the way your tone towards a subordinate or any one of your followers, they may take that aggressiveness and shut down um, because they're feeling attacked and you wouldn't want that. So that's another reason that leadership can be so effective. I kind of believe that this theory is saying that um, whatever a leader speaks through their body language sometimes speaks louder than the actual words they're saying themselves. And how we present our ideas is going to be a huge part of whether or not they're going to be accepted um, or ignored in our businesses or organizations or even society trying to create a social platform movement or anything like that. No one is going to take someone seriously who delivers this incorrect body language. So nonverbal communication um, can either, the information or message you're trying to get across can either be reaffirmed or even nullified based on the way uh, that you say something. So this is why it's very important for us as leaders who are trying to become even more effective leaders to use proper body language. Now that we understand like what this theory is now, the biggest thing is like how to actually implement it and practice it. And before I discuss kind of like how I've seen it in practice, we're going to discuss just the basics of body language when communicating with other people. So the first is going to be eye contact. Eye contact is huge in leadership. Uh, if you do not look at someone directly in the eye um, and you're looking elsewhere, they may think you're one, not interested, or the shiftiness may make them believe that um, you're nervous or don't trust them. But by, by, by looking someone's directly in the eye, or even if you're speaking in a big crowd, to just be able to look at more than one person can kind of let them know that you are there to talk to them and that you're there um, to connect with them. And in order to connect with someone, if you're not looking at them, it becomes very difficult. Um, in doing this. Um, another important part of that is um, a physical barrier. If there is a physical barrier between you and the people you're trying to talk to, it can kind of be difficult um, whether or not like they feel that closeness to you. Um, it's different when you're giving a presentation at a podium. Um, that barrier there is to know, let the audience know that you're there um, to present something to them. But if... Um, you and I were to have a communication between a wall or something like that, obviously it would be very difficult because that physical barrier in between us um, could be seen as a way to miscommunicate. For one, you might not see their full body language, and two, um, the barrier kind of creates uh, like literally a wall between you and the other person. Um, I've seen this very much so in doctor's offices, as I've been to many appointments with many different um, athletes I've worked with over time as an athletic trainer. But the doctors um, that are constantly on their computer, one, not always making eye contact with the athlete or patient, um, depending on who you work with, but they're on the computer typing, not even knowing that what, not even looking at the patient. And sometimes um, being in healthcare, I understand how important um, taking good history is and getting good notes in. Um, and I understand that time is money, especially for doctors, but not having that time to sit there and connect with the patient can really create um, distrust. And if your patient does not trust you, then it is very hard to get that back for one and two, for you to give good quality health care. And being a leader, they are looking up to you as a healthcare provider to take care of them and to take care of whatever illness or sickness or injury that they have. And if they don't feel that you are there for them and that you lose that trust, it becomes very hard um, for you to do your job. Because from the get-go, they're going to shut down and they're not going to open up to you and you're not going to be able to treat them as well um, as you could have been had you not had that barrier and you had created that eye contact. Um, so another thing that is important or a basic step is just having an open body stance. Um, even in the sense of just talking to another colleague or a friend or something like that, if you're slouched over um, and not really like interested in what the other person is saying, um, the speaker might think that the speaker might think that you're uninterested in what they are trying to say to you, um, 
and it makes them feel disrespected um, and sometimes can feel that that you are not listening. And a huge part of being a leader is listening. And you may be listening, but your body language says otherwise. So this is kind of going into that idea that sometimes our body language is saying more than our actual verbal communication. So this is going to just shoot down your chances of success if your followers and people you work with feel that you can't even listen to them. Um, so having square shoulders and being relaxed and calm and not so tense or um, having assertive and total focus just fo on whoever you are communicating with or who is trying to communicate with you um, can be very beneficial. So another part um, of the body language is gestures, um, which can kind of serve behind um, as like a punctuation mark um, to what you're actually saying. But don't let them become distracting. I know I have a hard time with this sometimes, um, probably in this video, of just moving around too much. So sometimes you have to come up with a way of um, keeping yourself grounded and not talking too much with your hands, things like that. So one, yes, be expressive. Don't just be here and talk like this, like a robot. Um, but whether it's smiling or using facial expressions when you tell your stories, like these are things that are able to captivate audiences' um, attention. They're like attention grabbers. And so it kind of encompasses all of the different aspects of the book, just how great body language is to 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 deep to research and dig further into um, even the smallest things such as sitting versus standing. Going back to the whole doctor example, a doctor that stands up and talks to their patient, the patient might be feel belittled. Well, yes, the doctor does know more than them, but that is being really aggressive and sometimes excusing their role as like like doing their actual evaluations and listening to the heart, whatever, sitting down with the patient and sitting at the level of the patient might make them feel um, more open to discuss things with you and that you show them that you are on their level and that you were there to care about them. And sometimes uh, different cultures, it's different as far as like touching goes, but even just placing a hand on a shoulder um, can be very uh, impactful for that patient as what you're going to tell them. Another important part about body language is minimizing your movement. Uh, moving the correct amount, but not not being a robot, but not <laughs> pacing back and forth across the stage or even just talking to someone. Because for one, they might look at you like you're crazy, and two, if you're moving back and forth, it shows that you're nervous. So the message you're going to try to get across, even if that might be a good one, the nervousness um, or the suspected nervousness from your pacing can make them think otherwise and that you aren't for sure of yourself and aren't sure of what your idea or message you're trying to get across to them. So that's also a very important part um, in leadership. And lastly, just kind of the tone or the demeanor in your voice. Granted, it's not necessarily body language, but it is a huge part of the nonverbal communication aspect of leadership and how you are communicating that message. Um, so if you use a tone that is too much, it can be very dangerous. Another part of leadership that is pretty important is uh, the tone or the demeanor um, or even just like the look in your eyes or your expression um, when talking to someone. This can be very important to not be too assertive, to be calm enough, um, but also inspire people. So kind of wrapping all of this up, I could go on and talk for hours about body language and leadership and just my experiences with it all, but I just believe that this theory is so important um, to implement in effective leadership. If you want to be an effective leader, you have to know what your body is saying just as much as what your verbal communication is saying to your audiences to be effective and to, to create change, inspire them, motivate them, like I had mentioned many times before um, in this video. So. I think that uh, Denning does a great job um, in this book of discussing body language and how it, important it is that it can literally make or break a leader. And I think when practicing how to become a good leader, this is something that we need to take into consideration um, in order to become more effective leaders. I want to thank um, you for taking the time out of your day to watch this presentation. Um, and I hope that you can practice and that this helps you.